Now, it's already been an election season. It's certainly got more than a few folks figuring out who's coming and going. We've certainly seen a bruising primary and now polls that basically say this thing is a toss-up and it's only going to get even more confusing from here all the way through November. Well, tonight, as we go on the air, we're just 200 days from the November election and the big decision facing the American public with obviously quite a bit at stake. And by all accounts, this could be, and some would say should be, a big year for the GOP. you got a fragile economy, worries about jobs, and a ballooning debt. And yet, the latest poll numbers, like the one in front of you, show the race for the White House a dead heat. So the question is, why isn't the GOP and its presumptive nominee, Mitt Romney, running away with the 2012 election? Well, two groups of voters, they certainly have a lot to say as it relates to that answer. If the Democrats said we had a war on caterpillars, then every mainstream media outlet talked about the fact that Republicans have a war on caterpillars, then we'd have problems with caterpillars. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is it's a fiction. Now, that was the chairman of the Republican National Committee, and while he was talking about caterpillars, what he was doing was comparing what the Democrats call the GOP's war on women to a war on caterpillars. But whether there is a war underway or not, and a lot of people can debate that one, it is Mitt Romney who has become a political casualty of this battle. Take a look at this poll number. Obama, ahead of Romney by almost 20 points when it comes to female voters. Now let's look to another demographic. We talked about this last night, Latino voters. Mitt's hole, even deeper there. A latest poll from Pew has Romney losing by 40 points to the president among the Latino electorate. It's a larger gap than Obama had over McCain at this same point in 2008. And then there's that feeling that has kept the late night comics pretty busy. The feeling that voters, including quite a few Republicans, just don't like or relate to Mitt Romney. Now, in this poll, Romney's favorability rating, 21 per point, let me try that in English now, 21 percentage points behind the president's, and he got 35% favorable rating below the favorable ratings of Al Gore, Bob Dole, and Walter Mondale taken all around this time in those respective elections. It's lower than any major party nominee till you got to go back to 1976. Well, to talk about where this race is right now, where the grand old party stands, and what we can expect from now to November, well, let's bring in uh, our panel first. Tom Doherty, political strategist and partner at Mercury, public strategy firm. Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author. And our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. Guys, thank you very much. And let's bring in our first guest from outside the studio, joining us live for our nation's capital, Tim Miller, Deputy Communications Director for the Republican National Committee. Tim, thanks for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Rich. Well, it's a half full, half empty kind of proposition. Polls have closed. Your guy, nominee, Mitt Romney, his dead heat with the president. But when you break down the numbers here, I have a hard time finding anybody who loves this guy. Uh, you look at Republicans their favorability rating, or at least embrace this guy's tepid. Nationally, we just went through his numbers, and whether it's the female electorate, the Latino electorate, they got major reservations with it. You got a narrow population you can draw from if today were the election to win. Well, Rich, I think that if you look at the numbers in a different way, uh, it tells a whole different story. I mean, this election is going to be a referendum on Barack Obama and his presidency. And his favorability rating right now is lower than any president at this time since Jimmy Carter. Uh, no president has been at 45 percent where he was in the last Gallup poll and gotten reelected in the modern era. Uh, that's because he's failed the American people on economic issues, on debt and deficit, and on the not following up on the promises that he made in 2008. So I think given all that, uh, we're in a very strong position headed into the general election coming out of a tough primary. Can you explain to me why in every poll I look at, uh, the female electorate has your party down, or at least your nominee down, 20 points to the president? Uh, I get, listen. We, we have sitting at our table a Republican consultants who will tell you, for the life of them, they don't understand when economies issue number one to the electorate, why so many Republicans in so many states are fighting the culture wars over contraception, over choice, and it certainly is hurting the candidate here if you look at the polls. Rich, if you look at uh, the most recent New York Times CBS poll that came out just this morning, uh, the gap among female voters uh, narrowed to six points. 
Uh, Governor Romney is only six points behind Barack Obama. You know, we just came out of a bruising primary season uh, with a lot of back and forth. Uh, the president uh, has pretty much gone unscathed for a couple of months. And even with that, he's struggling. His, poll, uh, his favorability ratings are below 50 percent. And these are the facts. He's failed female uh, you know, women all across the country. The, the female unemployment rate is higher. Uh, you know, disproportionately, women have struggled in this economy uh, when it comes to pocketbook hey, issues. Hey, Tim, no, time out for uh, one second. You know, gas prices. Tim, Tim, everything you can say, I, I think you can make a legitimate uh, argument on the campaign trail that, hey, a change would be better for everyone in the economy and the voters will decide that. But look at what you guys are fighting about. We talk about contraception on shows like this every night here and what's going on across the country. We're talking about changes as it relates to rights of women when it relates to choice. The, the Violence Against Women Act for crying out loud. That's being held up and debated right now in Congress. Rich, you guys are Rich, supposed to... I can to, tell you no, what no, you guys are talking about. You Rich. guys are supposed to win elections. Why are you debating the Violence Against Women Act? Rich, maybe on MSNBC and on your show, that's what we like to talk about. Uh, as that's certainly what the DNC likes to talk about. But I can tell you what's been coming out of the Republican National Committee for the last few months, and that is uh, economic issues, focusing on what actually matters to Americans in this economy. Uh, for the longest, uh, we've had the longest uh, period of time with an unemployment rate above 8% since World War II. Women are being disproportionately okay. hurt in this economy. Gas prices has d have doubled. All right, Tim, uh, Tim, you know, hold on. Though. You, you're right, more, though. I talked and about. That's what we're talking about. All right, about, but let's, let's, let's talk about what, what Republicans are talking about. Forget about uh, Democrats or anyone else. I mentioned the Latino vote. If I can, let's bring up Alberto Gonzalez. I don't think he's going to be confused here with the bleeding heart liberal uh, nominee for the Supreme Court in the Bush years. He said the following today after the debate about immigration and what he believes is a harmful impact here for Republicans. He said, quote, the way Republicans have talked about immigration has been harmful to the party. The dialogue has been mean, and we find our party facing an uphill battle because of the way that we talk about this issue. Um, I got Marco Rubio here who's trying to amend a version of the DREAM Act, but we're not even clear if the RNC or if uh, Romney's behind this. Um, Talk about what Gonzalez says. Do you guys regret some of the things that you've done to alienate Latino voters in an election year? Well, look, again, I think we have to go back to the data. I mean, if you look at, the, uh, at who is struggling in Barack Obama's economy, it's the Hispanic Americans uh, far more than, than whites or Caucasians. And if you look at the unemployment rate, uh, is up above 10% for Hispanic Americans. Uh, the poverty rate is skyrocketing. I mean, they are struggling in this economy. And what they need is, some, is a president in the White House who's going to actually implement policies that will create jobs and turn our economy around. But you think, uh, but I'm saying, that you is think the language on immigration. And that is going to help us with Hispanics. But you think the language on immigration here has been helpful for Republicans this year? Because Gonzalez look, doesn't, he ain't alone. Look, I think there's been a conversation about immigration happening on both sides. So if you look at what the president has done on immigration, absolutely nothing. He promised the Latino community in 2008 that his first year, one of his top priorities is going to be immigration reform. Nada. Now he's saying, oh, I promise you I'll do it next time. You know, I think that if you, immigration is a very challenging issue. There are a lot of folks that are talking about different solutions. But when it comes to November, and if you look at the numbers, Hispanic voters, for them, just like all voters, the most important issue is the economy and jobs. And for the Hispanic community, it should be, because they are really struggling under this president and under his policies that have uh, increased the debt. You know, Tim, you, know, you and I must in, have been uh, watching. The longest period of hey, unemployment Tim, since Listen, the you're doing Great your job Depression. well, but you and I must have been watching the different debates here. Because at the debates, all I heard about was building the fence, rounding it up, deporting them here. They're not approving the DREAM Act. They weren't talking about jobs in the economy for the Latino community. It was, hey, you know, you're not from here. We're going to get you out of here. And that was the universal message. And it's been reflected in the numbers. I'm not saying you I can turn back the clock, you, but come on. 
All right, now, I have here. to disagree with you, right, Rich. I, 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 think that, I think that Governor Romney, leaders in our party, us here at the Republican National Committee, and we have a Hispanic outreach effort that we started this, uh, that we launched uh, this <clears> week <throat> that's going out in the battleground states, that's look, going into all of the different Hispanic and Latino communities in places like Florida and North Carolina and Nevada, and, and spreading the message of economic opportunity and turning this economy around. That's okay. something that's important to all voters, particularly Hispanics. Right, last thing, that's Tim, what we've Tim been talking about. Wrap here, but I, I, I want to okay. I want to get into this one because it's gonna be the wrap. You know what came out right. um, after the Santorum campaign suspended uh, the campaign. There was a letter that went out here saying, "quote It truly frightens me to think what will happen if Mitt Romney is the nominee." But beyond that, you saw the Times story that you referenced. But early in the week, you have freshman Republicans saying, "Let's be clear, we're the conductors of this train. Romney or whatever the party, they're not driving it." We all know the Etch-a-Sketch label that your nominee has attached to him that his own campaign manager spoke about. How much of a problem do you have with your base here that they really can believe a guy who has changed his mind on so many positions that he's going to be the guy in the primary if he gets elected in the general? He has absolutely no problem. Just look at the numbers. This is a manufactured narrative by the left. 91%. Wait, 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 wait. His own campaign manager said hey, it's hey, look, at the sketch. Let me look at the numbers. His own campaign manager said it's a sketch. Ninety-one percent not me. of Republicans right. in the most recent poll are behind Mitt Romney. Four percent were for Barack Obama. Same poll. Eleven percent of Democrats uh, were looking, were either undecided or going for Mitt Romney. Uh, Mitt Romney shored, shored up this base, uh, and uh, he, he'll do just fine with the Republican base. Uh, and that's because this election is going to be a referendum on Barack Obama and his failed policies. And there is uh, unanimous agreement among the Republicans that Barack Obama has been a failure, and that it's time to change right. direction. I'll give you the last word on that. Tim Miller from the RNC. Thank you very much.